Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, joined by Phil Chambers from What Culture. Crown Jewel 2021 has just finished, and we are here to tell you what went down. And Phil Chambers, was that the best Saudi WWE show ever? You know what? I think it was. It's a low bar. It, it is, is a very low, it is a very low bar. bar. Every match, clean finish, apart from when you get to the end, but we'll get there. But yeah, pretty good all the way through. Yeah, I didn't hate it, which is... <laughs> about the best ringing endorsement I can give. But let's start at the beginning of the show. On the kickoff show, we had the Usos being the Hurt Business. Literally nothing to tell you about there. The main yep. show started with Hell in a Cell. Edge versus Rollins to conclude their trilogy to finish off this rivalry. They've got Edge emerging victorious, hitting a curb stomp on Seth Rollins on a chair after doing the submission thing with the, I think, a spanner in his mouth yeah. in the end. He'd also earlier on knocked Seth in a oh, spot we loved. So good. Knocked him off the apron, into the cell, through a table. Uh, this was a wild old brawl, Phil, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah, really good stuff. By far the longest match of the night as well. I think it's got like 27 minutes. Uh, but yeah, that spot, like off the top rope, off the side of the cell, through the table is oh. legit. Like one of my favourite ever, at least Hell in a Cell table spots. Like mm -hmm. it's so, so good. Um, but yeah, what, what do you expect from Edge and Seth Rollins? They're just going to kick each other's ass and have a really good time doing yeah, it. Chairs, ladders, tables, all that sort of thing getting involved. But Edge emerging victorious. Yeah. And now they'll both move over to Raw because of the bloody draft. Yeah. Why not? But hometown heroes come up next because <laughs> obviously it was Mansour versus Ali and... Who knew <laughs> Mansoor was going to win? The only hometown hero <laughs> who ever wins. Yeah. Um, not a well, huge amount to tell you about this match until it gets to the very end of it, but they put on a really good match between the two of them. Mansoor's best match? Probably, yeah. I think like with what they've been given in this whole feud, they've actually got quite a lot out of it, even though WWE doesn't really seem to care, but it kind of makes sense that this was the payoff mm -hmm. for it. Um, but yeah, Mansoor won in the end with like a slingshot into a neck breaker kind of thing. Like a really neck breaker move. version of Johnny Gargano's finish. Yeah. And then at the end of it, I don't know if you can remember his name, because nope. I cannot remember his Karate name. Karate guy. <laughs> but uh, a guy came out, and it was the Saudi Arabian silver medalist at the Olympics, uh, karate champion. <laughs> I'm glad they recognised him. Yeah, they seemed to have a good time with it. He kicked Ali in the face <laughs> after Ali was like, yeah, whatever, I'll square up to you. Just knocked him flat. It was a good time, all right. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> but let's be honest, the highlight of the entire show came next, because Matt Riddle came out on a sodding <laughs> camel. He came yes. out on a camel, guys. It's the best moment of a Saudi show ever. And that's yeah. even better than when Kane's wig fell off. We saw the camels earlier on, and there's like three of them at ringside while all these bloody fireworks were going off. Poor, Poor bastards. Uh, and we were like, if someone doesn't come out riding a camel, we're going to be so disappointed. We picked Xavier, didn't yeah. we? Xavier it Woods. So much sense for it to be Riddle. But yeah, Riddle, uh, RK Bro came out after Styles and Omos, uh, and Riddle went, actually, I'll be one second, ran backstage. Then we realised there was only two camels still there, and we thought, no, surely not. <laughs> yeah, Riddle came out. Orton couldn't believe it. Uh, in the end, RK Bro, of course, retained the Raw Tag Team Championships, uh, the spot that we all kind of predicted. I think almost got taken out by the camel. I'm not 100% certain. <laughs> Big quiz -y. But regardless, he wasn't, we he wasn't there. It was off screen. It was off camera. He wasn't involved in the finish, so I'm saying the camel took him out. Yeah. Uh, Orton, as expected, hit a phenomenal... Hit, hit RKO as uh, Styles went for the phenomenal forearm and then we had a floating bro from riddle one two three arcade bro retain no real surprises yeah absolutely good stuff all around from those guys just pretty much what you'd expect from them in this kind of situation and then we moved on to what you'd pretty much accept, ex expect from WWE in this kind of situation. They gave the Queen's Crown match like five minutes. The Although least time fair, on the card, yeah. The least amount of time on the card, but it still probably roughly doubled the amount of time <laughs> they put into this tournament in the first place. Oh. Anyway, God damn it, they don't, don't care about these things. But it was Selena Vega going up against Dewdrop, and yeah, what can you say? They got five minutes to have a match. It was... Fine. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was okay, I suppose. Look, I was expecting a doodrap to become a queen of doodrap uh, so she could do the whole yas queen bollocks. I almost swore then, I apologise in <laughs> advance if I do, Phil. Um, but it was Alina Vega, and you know what? We're really happy for her because yeah. we hoped she'd do big things when she came back, and then she went, oh, and nine. <laughs> and yeah, it all likely had sort of gone off, off the rails. But, uh, yeah, she is now the queen, I suppose. Uh, they'll do the crap gimmick for a while, but at least she's yeah. got something, Phil. Yeah, yeah, something to clutch onto. Like, we always, like you were saying about maybe making her money in the bank when she first came back, and then, no, it's zero and nine. Just, absolutely got absolutely nothing. At least it's something she can use this, hopefully, to go on to bigger and better things. Did she, did she win with the Sunset Flip Powerbomb? 
Yes, she did as well. Yeah. And, it worked, and it worked really well. It looked like, great. Google sells the hell out of that, to be fair. Uh, right, let's move on and talk about Falls Count Anywhere, No Holds Barred, Do What You Like, basically. Bobby Lashley <laughs> versus Goldberg. I did not have high hopes for this. <laughs> and it was better than expected. Yep. Things went better than expected, basically. Um, didn't feel good very early on when Bobby Lashley... Oh, by the way, earlier on, Seth Rollins had wrapped a chain around his foot. But this time, Bobby Lashley wrapped it around his fist and battered Goldberg with it. And then Goldberg did that spot where he goes for the spear, misses, and usually concusses himself on the uh, ring post. He then didn't concuss himself. There was blood still there. He did bust himself up Yeah, but he, uh, he, uh, he looks like he's going to get battered. Uh, he got the thing he got. Bobby Lashley got tables and chairs and all that sort of thing involved. In the end, uh, he goes for a spear. Like, uh, Goldberg moves out the way. He goes through the table. Goldberg fought back in the end. Uh, they brawled up to the top of the ramp. Out came the Hurt Business with kendo sticks. And in two moves, uh, he took out both Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Cedric took a... Oh, that was not like giving that ramp. And he just went, whoop, up you go. See you later. Didn't he even did get hit by a kendo stick once. <laughs> We'll say this. And he did get Bobby Lashley up for a jackhammer, which surprised he both did. of us. And didn't... Crippling. And it was a solid one. Yeah, I mean, fine. Bobby Lashley was bleeding profusely from the arm for some reason. Anyway, the finish didn't involve Gage Goldberg, so I hated it. But <laughs> uh, it was, Jesus, it was a long fall, to be fair, for both of them. It was. Uh, Goldberg speared Bobby Lashley off the ramp into some cardboard boxes and also some tables. It was a long old fall, big old bump. Uh, but Goldberg wins and says, you come after my family sort of thing. Yeah. Fine, I'd probably, uh, you know, I was disappointed that Lashley didn't win, but I think if you take him away for a while and yeah. then bring him back, he hasn't really lost anything, and I thought he would if he got beaten by Oldberg. Basically. Yeah, and it was weird bringing the Hurt Business back into this just to literally take a couple of bumps from Goldberg, and it's not really made him any sense. Let's just move on from this. Yeah. And, like, now, that's done. That feud is settled. We can move on now. Uh, and speaking of moving on, yay! yay! We moved on to the King of the Ring finals. It was, of course, Xavier Woods versus... Uh, Finn Balor, no demon Finn Balor, it should be noted. And they had a really good match. Something different to the rest of the card as well, more sort of straightforward wrestling mm -hmm. match. Um, but they put on a really good back, back, well, back and forth mm -hmm. um, event. And then, yeah, um, Xavier Woods hit the elbow at the end to become finally the correct decision yes! for one of these things. Dreams can come true in WWE, kids. King Woods, or King Xavier, as the commentators Dumb. kept on insisting on announcing, even though King Woods was himself saying it was King Woods, and now he's saying he's got all the power and people have to bow down and do what he says. And the king and queen both can't put a cape on. <laughs> it's true. Just, it's really just fascinating. That was all they had to do both times, and they just went, I'm sure it'll, it'll stick to my incredibly sweaty back. No. Nope. So it'll be fine. <laughs> Fell off both times. <laughs> Loads of pyro, though, and uh, yes, uh, Xavier Woods shouted down the lens about having lots of power. I want him to make pro proclamations. Yeah. But I'll be honest, yeah, I thought it was going to be either Demon Finn or just normal Finn winning this. He missed a coup de gras, like you say. Uh, Xavier hit that uh, walk, walk, walk ropes, yeah, elbow yeah. drop thing. Looked great. Won the whole thing. Next up, Phil, I've got a question for you. Yep. Y'all want to go big? Because I do. <laughs> Big E retained the WWE Championship in a great match, I thought, with Drew McIntyre. He is insanely strong. Yeah. We're going to talk more about insane strength in a second about Bianca Belair, but um, for a match that didn't have the heel face dynamic, just like the, the Finn Balor Xavier Woods match, I thought they told a great story. Um, Big E hit a big ending and Drew kicked out and Big E couldn't believe it. Drew hit a Claymore out of nowhere as Big E was going for that thing where he tries to kill himself diving through the ropes. Yeah. And Dr Big E kicked out. And then Big E just went, up you go, like he was, you know, like a paperweight or something and not just a giant Scotsman. <laughs> and yeah, beat him, pinned him, retained the WWE Championship. Thank goodness that they didn't take it away from him so quickly. And hopefully a sign of things to come for Big E. Yeah, absolutely. Like the finish, like you say, like the way he just manhandled Drew up into it. Like it was like almost in a tombstone position at one point. He was just like, nope, up, up, up. We You're go, not quite in position down. there. There we just, go, bang. Just chucking around like he was absolutely nothing. But great for Big E. Uh, shouting at the end that this is like the start of things to come. Yes. So hopefully they move on to big things with this. Uh, but this is really good fun. Just big, beefy men. 
slapping man meat <laughs> around so many belly to belly super so much everyone was sweating so <laughs> much on this, so show. on this show jeez really good fun really enjoyed this and speaking of really enjoying matches we were moving on to the triple threat between the, all of the women we had Becky Lynch Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks another women's match where the build has been absolutely trash <laughs> yeah. and then they go right you just do the wrestling part of things and they go oh we'll make it good now <laughs> who knew that when you just kind of leave them to it they put on amazing <laughs> things uh, I think this is at least a contender for match of the night if mm-hmm. not match of the night itself and it was sort of stayed away from the normal triple threat kind of dynamic of chucking one person out and then two people wrestle for a bit and one person comes in and chucks them out, etc., etc. A lot of it was three people in the ring at the same time, and they made the most use of that than I've seen, yeah. at least in a triple threat, in a very, very long time. Loads of moves where they were connecting things together, like chucking people at each other, like one person coming out of something into like a hurricane run Sasha on someone else. Spring off Bianca and kick yeah. Becky Lynch off the apron at one point. Be- uh, Bianca Belair showed insane oh my God. feats of strength. I think she just hurled... One arm! That one... You know that press thing she did with Sasha? With Sasha. One arm. One arm. What? And there was another bit... Double disarmor? Double disarmor. There was another bit where Bianca had... Was it? Did she have Becky in the air, but Sasha was, like, on the floor trying to grab yeah. her feet? And she had Becky up, and, like, while she was lifting her, just one, like, foot up, stomped off, Sasha you. Banks. And then it was in a suplex, and then she almost dropped Becky in the suplex, down to, like, really close to the ground, and she was like, nope, I'm not having this. Hurled her back up into the air. Absolutely incredible stuff. But the way that all three of them played off each other with all the reversals and the ridiculous inventive moves going up against each other, it was absolutely fantastic. And Bianca had the match won. Bianca did have the match won. And then we got into the sneaky little finish of Becky Lynch. Yes, so Bianca has the match won. She hits the KOD on the champ on Becky Lynch. Sasha Banks, though, tries to get involved, tries to steal the pin. She gets thrown to the outside. Then Bianca, uh, Bianca was like get off you and then she gets taken to the outside Sasha jumps back in looks like she's going to just walk over to a KO'd Becky Lynch and pin her Becky Lynch pops up rolls her up grabs the ropes shenanigans but she's a heel champion so I'll allow it Becky Lynch retains and you do it all over again for me. Yeah, 100%. Just none of the TV stuff. <laughs> none of the TV None of the can they coexist. We can just completely skip all of the build to every big women's match this year and just focus on the matches and they've always been great. And I can't <laughs> wait to leave some belt swaps between her and Chandler. <laughs> there you go, there's your belt and there's your belt. And now we're going to fight the Survivor <laughs> Series. Right, let's move on to the main event, uh, which was Pitbull's performance with the under... <laughs> no, it was uh, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship. And the big question we still don't really have an answer to, and that is whose side is Paul Heyman on? This was a war. They were just slinging big shots. It was just suplexes and Superman punches all over the place. Uh, Eventually, it looked like Brock might have the match won. He hit a F5, hit a couple of F5s, in fact. Uh, One of them knocked down referee Charles Robinson. Didn't just knock him down. Jesus Christ. Roman Reigns into Charles Robinson. I'm not sure if they genuinely (laughs) called an audible and went, well, we can't have him actually finish the match because I think Roman Reigns' leg has just taken his head off. Uh, So anyway, he gets knocked down. They're both on the ground. What's going to happen sort of thing? Well... Paul Heyman's got the Universal Championship. He's going to pass it to Brock. He's going to pass it to Roman. Neither. He's going to chuck it in the middle and help them do the tug of war because we all love that brilliant callback to that one before WrestleMania. Brock gets his hands on the title, looks all happy with himself. He's sweating like a big sweaty tomato with a, <laughs> an, uh, an onion edge haircut thing off the top. Uh, and then he turns around into a double super kick from the Usos, drops the title. Roman Reigns clobbers him with it. Covers him. Another referee comes out who hasn't seen anything. (laughs) One, two, three. Roman Reigns retains the Universal Championship despite the fact that Brock Lesnar kind of got screwed. Look, this was fairly divisive on our chat in terms of how people felt about it. But for me... I went into it thinking, and this isn't a good thing, obviously, that I go into it going, ah, they're not going to give us a finish, but it's Roman versus Brock. They ain't going to blow this off in Saudi, are they? Yeah, absolutely. This is big, big money feud. You're going to get a few shows out of this at least and not yet play it off at a Saudi show. Uh, there's a lot, like we say, they kept the Paul Heyman thing um, really obscure, like you don't quite know where his allegiances lie. He still walked off with Roman Reigns at the end and he still came out with Roman Reigns at the beginning, but there's definitely still question marks there and the way when he threw it in and Brock Lesnar was just laughing at him, like going, what are you doing, mate? Um, it was really good. So there's still a lot of questions there and a lot of like places they can go. I think there's still a, a lot, of, lot of mileage they can I get just, out of this. Yeah, um, I, I never anticipated a definitive result here. Yeah. And I always automatically go to a retention on the Saudi shows because unless it's The Fiend and you have to put the title on him because people are going to riot with <laughs> Seth Rollins retaining, 
I think oh, they were all gonna, always going to go in this direction. And, yeah, for as carny as it is, take my money for the next time for this, because this felt like big time. This felt like mania main event sort of thing, yeah. even though it was just... The biggest moves. There was no. There was no yeah, intricacy yeah, yeah. there. No, none at all. Um, but there also the fact that they kept the rest of the show quite clean in terms of the finishes. I think lets them get away with this yeah. a little bit as well. Because it's like there's like we're okay with these finishes on occasion when they make sense. It's just don't do them all the goddamn time. And this was a time where they kept it simple for the rest of the show. And this one actually makes so, sense. So hometown heroes win. Yeah. And most of the shows kept clean without shenanigans. Who knew they can actually do it? Just only in Saudi Arabia for some reason. Anyway, let us know your thoughts on everything that went down in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And subscribe to What Cool Dressing, wherever you get your podcast from. Myself and Phil are going to go into more detail chatting about that. And in probably just a few minutes' time, Simon Miller is going to be upping and downsing. If he doesn't give that fucking camel a golden up, I'm coming after him, all right? <laughs> it's the best thing ever. Basically, I tweeted this, film. I'm going to say it again. This show is better than All Out because it had one camel. And, it, and on all I had zero camels. Fair. Fight me. Right, let us know your thoughts, as I said, and in the comments. And someone needs to give us $7,000 so we can buy a one Yeah, we've, what, did it, so what was it? A, a fully... Fully what? intact. Fully intact. We're all going to we're gonna have a what culture camel. Feel free to name Humphrey, the temporary name we're giving him, or CM Hump. CM Hump was a good one. as well the in the comments <laughs> as well. Uh, you can follow him at Phil My Chambers. You can follow me at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at what culture WWE. But this has been Crown Jewel 2021. What went down? Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.